There are a lot of AI dev tools out there, but it's hard to tell which one you should use. Personally, OpenAI's Codex is one I find myself using the most often right now. So to help you get an idea of how it can be used for your projects and tasks, I'm going to show you the way I use it. In the end, you'll have a better idea of whether or not OpenAI's Codex could work well for your needs. Let's get started. Really quick, you're watching part two of the video series on how I use OpenAI's Codex. I wanna set the stage for you in case you didn't watch part one, go ahead and check the link in the description below or on the screen here to watch part one first. And then you can jump into this video where I continue showing you how I use OpenAI's Codex. Now onto the rest of the video. At this point, Codex alerted me that the task was done. It worked for about eight minutes, 33 seconds on that task. It read from the GitHub issue and we could see a summary. Added a words on stream board visibility toggle to the player settings dialog so users can control whether the board is shown or not. And then persisted the board toggle via the board query parameter and centralized URL to form population. So the dialog reflects current settings whenever it opens, right? It was unable to capture a screenshot, which I didn't know it was capable of potentially doing that. Maybe there's something I can do to turn that on, but that's for another time. So two things to take away from this for you to learn of the experience with using Codex in this way. One is it is capable of reading GitHub issues or other contexts from the web, so long as you turn that on for the environment that you're using for that project. And then two, you can actually view the difference and the changes that it made according to that task that you gave to it directly here in this code view on the right hand side of the screen. In this case, we can see that it added a div to my HTML, a form group that talks about adding a checkbox and toggle label show words on stream option there like that. And there's some more changes in the JavaScript below to handle adding that query parameter to the URL or the board query parameter as well as here. And then it moved some old code into this populate settings form from URL function. So that's okay, it, it, it refactored the code a little bit. It noticed that it was being reused and instead of writing it over and over again, it extracted this into its own function that can then be used in each case. At this point in my workflow with Codex, if I find any issues with the changes, the diff that I see from Codex in order to implement and fulfill the task that it was given, I will then go down to the chat window here and request changes or ask a question about what it was doing or how it made the decisions it made for that particular task. So I can chat with it here, ask for those changes, and then we'll go and iterate on what the existing changes it already made. So the main thing to call out as a caveat here with using Codex in this way is the expectation is you're gonna rely on Codex solely for making all the changes needed to fulfill that task. If you want to, and you can do this, make changes yourself, you're gonna have to expect then to start a whole new task for any further changes beyond that. That's one limitation I found with Codex that's been a bit of a pain, is that I can't work with it. I have to let Codex work on its own, finish what it's doing, and then I can maybe make more changes separately afterwards. That all said, I feel like for this current task, I think it did an okay job with the changes that I'm seeing, but to really get full confidence in these changes, meeting my expectations, I'm gonna pull these changes down locally and run the application and see them in action. And the way we can go about doing that, and really this is how I, my workflow goes, even if I don't wanna make any further changes or run it locally, I'm gonna tell Codex to create a PR against the repository. What's nice about this is it's not going to make any changes to your main branch. It's gonna push these off to a separate branch, keep those changes isolated from what's running in production for you. Now you have some options here. You can create a draft PR or you can copy the git apply or patch. I haven't personally done anything like that. I just typically go directly with creating a PR. It takes a few seconds to go ahead and do that. And then we'll be able to click on view PR once it's available there. All right, it's done making the PR. I'm gonna click on that. That will bring me over to the pull request on the repository up in GitHub. It gave us a nice title for the changes that are being made in this PR a summary in the description, and then how we can go about testing these things and a link back to the task. Now, not everyone's gonna have access to that. Only you and your account will have access to this link here. So just a heads up on that, but it will bring you back to that task in Codex if you needed to reference it and you lost track of that tab in your browser. Now, the other added benefit of following this type of workflow with Codex by having it open up a PR is we're essentially following the typical workflow that we would and the reasons and benefits we get 
from using this, which is being able to have PR checks, right? And with a PR open for the changes from Codex, our usual pipeline checks of running tests, evaluating security, linting, any other usual automated actions you might want to run can happen like normal. In this case, I have Sneak evaluating the code changes and open source dependencies for any security issues that might be introduced via these changes from Codex. And we could see here directly in the PR that through the Sneak integration that I have with my GitHub account, it ran two different security checks that have both passed for these changes that are being introduced in the PR from Codex. Speaking of Sneak, if you want to get started using it in the same way I am here, you can head on over to sneak.io, that's S-N-Y-K.io, to sign up for your free account and start scanning your projects today. So now that I see all of my checks have passed, I'll pull down this branch locally to run the application and test out the changes made by Codex. If everything works as expected, then I'll go ahead and merge the PR. But before I do that, let me pull these changes down locally and test things out. All right, so I have my project pulled down locally under the main branch and I have it running and I wanna show you the baseline of what the application's doing and what changes we're expecting so that you have some context of what we're looking for in the changes from Codex in that PR and branch. So it's running locally. Let me get the browser open really quick. All right, so here's this side project application that I have running here. And I have this in the top right-hand corner, a little settings dialog pop-up that comes up. And what I want Codex to add here is the a toggle button just like this where we turn on or off the Twitch chat. And the behavior is going to be similar to the behavior for Twitch chat. So right now, the settings have this Twitch chat visible on the web page. And if I toggle that off and click save, it'll refresh the page and we can see the Twitch chat is no longer visible on the page. What I want the codex changes to do is make a similar settings for visibility of this board that you see in the center here for the words on stream game itself. So we should see a new toggle button that also has the same behavior that when that changes and gets saved, it reloads the page and hides that component from the view. So how do we get the changes from Codex? Well, Codex conveniently added a new branch that we can pull down and they typically name it based on the task that you gave it to it. So let's take a look at what that branch is really quick so I know which one to pull down. All right, we're back over on the PR and we can see that the branch is codex slash. So it's nice that it prefixes the branches that it uses with the name codex so we know where it's coming from. And then the name of it, which is address GitHub issue number 38. So I'm gonna copy that and then use that to pull down that branch locally and run it. And then I'm gonna say git check out the branch, paste that in from codex. And we'll see that we switched to that branch and we're up to date. And then we should be able to automatically detect these changes since I'm using this as an Astro based project. It should automatically detect that other changes were made and refresh the page. So we're going to head back over to our browser and see the changes Codex made to the UI for us. All right. So here we are in the browser. I'm going to click on the settings button here to open up the settings dialog. And awesome. We see the words on stream toggle option here. I'm going to turn the Twitch chat on and turn the board off for words on stream. When I click save, it refreshes, the board is now gone and Twitch chat is back up. We can turn Twitch chat off, click save. So everything's working and behaving as expected. The other thing I wanna double check is that the URL parameters are updating properly. So in this case, we can see board is being set to false. And if I turn the board back on and save, board is being set to true now. So everything is behaving as expected and Codex successfully implemented the changes for that GitHub issue for me now I can move on to merging that PR. Now, one thing to note before I merge this is what I was saying before. If I didn't like the changes that Codex made and I, when I'm running it locally, I can go ahead and manually make changes as needed and push those to the branch as well. However, if I do that, Codex will lose context of where it left off and recognize that I made changes and I'll have to start a new task for anything else that I might want it to automatically do on its own. Let me show you that in action really quick just to demonstrate further. So for something small, let's say I don't want to call it show words on stream or I wanted to add show words on stream board in here as the text, something simple like that. You really don't need codex to go do that. You can do that yourself. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and add the word board on there to make it very clear that this is a words on stream board to the user. So I'm going to head on over to my editor. I'm going to go to that page, find words on stream in here. Where was it? Here's where those changes are in that dialog. The settings dialog we can see right there. I'm going to say show words on stream board. I'm going to save that. Toggle the words on stream board visibility. So it says it there in the form help, but it didn't say it in the toggle text there. So I wanted that in there to have it more complete. So now I'm going to add those changes. I'm going to say git 
commit, commit those changes. And then I'm going to push those changes to the branch. So double checking that those changes are happening in the browser here. We can now see it does say board and everything else is working as expected. I pushed those changes to the branch and now I'm back in Codex and I'm going to ask it to try and add that as well, right? Just for the sake of demonstration here, please update the toggle button text to say board instead, right? And I'm going to send that to Codex. Now what this does is it ends up starting up the environment all over again. However, if you had recently opened up the environment, it will probably lean on that existing one. But if you wait too much time, it tends to save resources by shutting down the environment it was previously using for the task. All right, it took about two minutes, but it finished that task. Uh, again, keep in mind, two minutes, that's a long time for a small, simple change that you could just make yourself, but just a heads up on this. So it made those changes. You can look at the logs too, if you'd like. That's one thing I didn't call out before to see exactly how Codex goes about reasoning and thinking about what it needs to do. And there's a lot of options and capabilities you can include that influence this process, like an agents file, agents.md file in your project to help give it more context and guidance outside of the task itself. That said, it made code changes and we need to update the branch. Now, this is where things can kind of get out of sync because you made changes, but Codex is also making changes separately. So we'll run into some issues here where you might need to create a new PR instead to overwrite things or update the branch. So let's try updating the branch and see how that goes. And there we go. Codex does not currently support updating PRs that are updated outside of Codex. For now, please create a new PR. This is exactly what I was talking about. It recognized that there were changes made outside of Codex itself, and it doesn't have a way of syncing that right now, but maybe in the future it'll update to support that. So you can kind of work hand in hand with Codex instead. So just a note on that. But in this case, we knew that I already made the changes. Everything's good to go. I'm going to merge the PR and then I'm going to show you the last step I do just to kind of keep things tidy with using Codex in this workflow. All right, so we're back over in the PR. I'm going to click merge pull request, confirm merge. And then while that's going, although that was pretty quick, uh, typically it takes a little bit longer. I'll head back over to the Codex UI and go back to the main view here. And we can see this task right there. Whenever I see that I've merged a PR, I then go ahead and archive that task just to keep this whole area tidy and cleaned up and not too noisy so that I can keep track of all the multiple tasks I might have running. Right now, it's just these two that you saw, but at times I'll have more than two. I'll sometimes have five or more tasks going and if they're done, I'm not working on them anymore. I want to get them out of the way by archiving it. If you ever need to go back to old tasks, they do have an archive view right here. But anytime you want to archive a task, there's a little icon. You hover over that particular task and click on archiving. In fact, I'm going to do that for this one as well, since I'm not really using it. And there you have it. That covers my typical workflow for agentic coding with OpenAI's Codex. Now, I mentioned earlier, there are several other ways you can interact with Codex in addition to the web interface. Let me give you a quick look at those two. You can see right from OpenAI's Codex website, when you click the drop down, you can see there are many ways to start leveraging Codex outside of just Codex Web, which I showed you in this video. You can add an extension to your favorite IDE that you might be using for your projects like VS Code, Cursor, Windsurf, or if you're a heavy terminal user, command line user, you can use the Codex CLI and work with it from there. Now, the last way that I hinted at and talked about very briefly earlier in the video that I like to interact with Codex as well is via the OpenAI ChatGPT app. In the ChatGPT app, there is a Codex option that will open you up to a view very similar to what we saw on the web, and you can start interacting with Codex that way too. The nice thing about that is if you don't have access to a laptop or desktop computer, but you have ideas for tasks for it to work on, or you have ones running that you kicked off and you had to step away, you can open up the app, check on things, make modifications, and tell Codex to do more tasks for you while you're handling other things and going about your life. If you're interested in me diving deeper in these other ways that I tend to interact with Codex, whether it's via the command line, VS Code, or my mobile application, let me know in the comments below. That wraps things up for this video. I'm curious, have you been using Codex? What have you found to be the best workflow with it? How does it differ from the one that I just showed you? Or have you been using other tools instead? Let me know all that in the comments below, please, because I want to learn from you as well. That does it for this video. If you got value out of it, be sure to like it down below and share it with somebody who can put it to use. And if you made it this far, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. Thanks for watching and happy, safe coding, everyone.